Well, hello and welcome to the Energy Arena in Aarhus and day four of the 2014 Men's European Handball Championships in Denmark. My name is Paul Bray. Thanks for joining us for this Group C match between Russia and Serbia. Teams already coming out here in the arena. Well, two matches this evening in Aarhus. Later on, Olympic champions France will be taking on Poland in the second match of the evening. But first up, there is the important matter of this match between uh, Poland, uh, Serbia rather, and Russia on their way out now. And the opening matches in Group C, France swept Russia aside 35-28. They're hoping to bounce back from that here. And a uh, sparse crowd, but some still making their way in, and a few supporters to both of the teams, and some already here for the next match. So the usual high fives as the teams move up. We just wait for the Russians to line up, and uh, the introduction of the teams from the hall announcer. Start with Serbia. This, the standings then after France's emphatic win uh, on the opening day against Russia and Serbia in an untidy, a scrappy affair, but they just hung on to win uh, 2019 against Poland. So France and Serbia on two points at the moment. Poland and Russia yet to get off the mark. But uh, already we could see a decision on uh, who goes through to the main round. Three teams from each group of four go through to the main round. A win or a draw in this match for Serbia. We'll see their ticket booked and will leave Russia with their backs to the wall for their last match on Friday against Poland. There is the coach for the uh, Serbian team, Vladan Matic, took over from uh, Vukovic with uh, Ljubomir Vran just doing a little spell in the middle. And now the introduction of the Russian team. Number 11 will be key, the playmaker. He's for Metalog Skopje in Macedonia. The likely starters we just saw there, number 13, Gorbo. You know, the defense specialist. in the right back position. So that's the Russian team. They uh, also have a relatively new coach. Took over since the European Championships two years ago. Oleg Kulichov, a former Russian international. Won the European Championships in 96 and the World Championships in 97. Some of the fans still a bit muted. Yes, you're on television, you can smile now. And the referees from Spain, Oscar Aloy Lopez and Angel Sabroso Ramirez. Now introduce the table officials, including Panos Antonio, supervisor from Cyprus, and uh, the EHF observer Henrik Lakolovs from Denmark. Mirilic working up a bit of a sweat in his warm up. So, all the introductions made here in the Energy Arena in Aarhus, and it's time now for the national anthems. And, uh, the, uh, spectators will be asked to uh, take to their feet. Starts with Russia.
return of the uh, Serbian team to have their anthem. Anthem's played and the teams will wheel round for the customary shaking of the hand. So will it be an opportunity then for Serbia to book their main round ticket or will the Russians spoil their party? Russia very much rebuilding their team at the moment. Serbia, of course, silver medalist two years ago on home soil. So for Russia, well, uh, as I mentioned, they are rebuilding up the Kulichov in the travel without key players. Chipurin, Rasvotsev, both injured and Dipurin, who declared himself unavailable. It's clearly a problem. They are relying on Akman Gorbok at the back and the hugely experienced Igor Pulo. And there is one of them, Gorbok, 31 years of age, plays in Germany for Rainer Kalöven. Born in Belarus, but naturalized Russian, plays at left back. So he may be on his way to Vardar Skopje. And for Serbia, well, they retain 10 of the players who won silver at Euro 2012. And they're going to rely heavily on the shooting power, of course, of uh, Vujin and Momi Rilic at the back. And the organizational skills of Niradic, while goalkeeper Stanic was their standout player in the first half. There is the captain, Momi Rilic. 456 goals for his country and 125 appearances. Currently plays his club handball in Hungary for Vesprem after a long spell with the uh, German powerhouse Kiel. So Oleg Kulechov, the coach who uh, took over from uh, Maximov after the European Championships two years ago when they finished a disappointing 15th while for Serbia. Matic, who took over from the uh, temporary assignment that Ljubomir Vranjes took on, the Flensburg coach, after Vukovic had led them to European silver two years ago. Of course, beaten in the final by Denmark. So the crowd getting in uh, good mood here ahead of the throw-off. So here we go then in the energy arena in Aarhus and it's Russia in the all blue strip who throw off playing from right to left in this Group C match against Serbia today playing in the white strip. And Serbia top of the group on two points with France or they're just behind them on goal difference while Russia sits uh, with Poland at the bottom on zero points after just one round of matches so far. Atman tries to cut back inside again. Looking for a much better performance here today, the Russians. They uh, looked a little caught in the headlights by France in their opening match. And, uh, the uh, final scoreline of 35-28 uh, is flattering, I would say, given the performance. France turned their bench heavily in the second half, despite the fact that uh, they've come here without a lot of their big stars. First shot of the game and a mistake by Stanic. Well, if Dokimov, the line player, will be ever so grateful for that. Gets him off to a better start. Couldn't quite believe his luck, but from that angle, you would have expected Stanic, who made 17 saves in their opening match, to have covered it. So Russia off the mark. So no surprise that uh, Serbia start with uh, Vujin and Ilic. And uh, Petar Nenadic, number 31, is the playmaker. Nikšević has come around now. Vujin tries to get space against this 5-1 uh, defence. It's gone in. Nicely done. Team spirit on the bench. And they 
uh, settle down again now, Russia. Now, these teams have met four times, Serbia winning on three occasions and Russia just once, and they actually met in the uh, qualification group who were drawn together for these European Championships. Serbia won the group ahead of Austria, with Russia finishing third, but getting in the lucky, uh, the lucky place. Akman scores, meanwhile. 2-1 to Russia, who's still defending with a very deep 5-1 defence. So as I was saying, the uh, Serbians uh, finished top of the group with nine points. They lost to Austria away and drew at home to the Austrians. Russia finished third, but uh, luckily for them, because Denmark are both hosts and defending champions, there was a spare place for the best place third team in the uh, qualifying groups, and Russia just edged it. Meanwhile, they've levelled the score here with their own number 11, Alem Toskic. 31-year-old who plays for Vardar Skopje. Quite a lot of the Russian team are there. Milic, the uh, other goalkeeper on the bench, is there. Toskic and three of the players who didn't travel, two through injury and one uh, declaring himself unavailable. So quite a few of the players here today. Uh, In fact, uh, he would have been up against a lot of his teammates uh, if they'd travelled from the Russian side. Of course, Chipurin, Rasvodsev and Dibirov also with Vardar Skopje. Passive play being worn now, the Russians need a shot, that's blocked. Atman gets a second chance and that's parried away. And I'm not sure if that uh, got touched by the goalkeeper in the end or... Uh... Oh, and again, lovely spin. And uh, Evdokimov coming in behind. No one picked him up, and Stanis annoyed, but it's closed angle. But look at the spin. Ran his hand over the top of the ball. Stanis thought he had it covered. He didn't. Well, uh, Evdokimov, who managed just two from six in their opening match, has uh, managed to score from his two opening shots here today. More concentration and attack needed. Nikšević tries to barge his way through. The winger held up at the last, gets a free throw. Nikšević, who plays in Poland for Wisła Płock after a short spell in Spain for Valladolid. So still is very deep defence, pushing right up onto Nedadic. Skopin served the player task with the disrupting the Serbian build-up. And he latches onto the captain, Ilic, who's shifted around into the central role for the moment. Nedadic takes a shot himself. And as Bogdanov goes to his left, Nedalic goes for the uh, near post and scores his second 3 all. Nedalic, who also plays for Wisła Płock in Poland, alongside his teammate Nikšević. Oh, that's a two-minute suspension. Surprise look, but uh, not too much argument after the foul on Sergei Gorbok, the left back coming in, and Minolovic, the defence specialist for Serbia. Round the neck, anything round the neck and you're off, I'm afraid, and that happened right in front of the referee. Five minutes played then, and it's three all here in Aarhus, in uh, Jutland, the east coast of uh, Denmark. Chance then for Russia maybe to try and capitalize with the power play. Little handoff, and that's an attacking foul. Good defense. Ilic got up quickly. Break is on. Nikšević cuts back into the wing. Prodanovic and the right winger puts it away. Nicely done, but uh, it was a good steal. Ilic got himself in a good position, and despite the extra man, Russia. Make a mistake and get uh, penalised for it almost instantly. And that's another mistake. Two fast breaks. Prodanovic again. Unlucky for Bogdanov. Got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. The odds were stacked against him. Two goals in 30 seconds. Terrible mistake. Gorbok gifting it a second time. 
Looking for the line, that's more like it, that's a penalty, arm taken in the act of shooting, and if Dokimov, who had a miserable opening game, has made a cracking start here, yellow card for Prodanovic, meanwhile, standing inside the area as well. Dokimov, who plays for Permski Medvedi, currently second in the uh, Russian Championship behind the defending champions, Tchaikovsky Medvedi. So the penalty will be taken by the captain, Dmitry Kovalev. Four from four in the opening game from the seven meter line for the captain. Stanic comes a long way forwards. Well, he waited Kovalev, and uh, when Stanic lifted his leg, Kovalev, cool as a cucumber, dropped it in underneath. So they've uh, pulled one back, and uh, 10 more seconds for Russia before they. Uh, Run out of time on their power play. And it's been a 2-1 exchange in favour of Serbia, who are now back to full strength again. Bogdanovic. Boyin! Oh. Bogdanov fumbles it as it goes low. First goal of the game for Boyin, who also had a miserable time in their opening game. Scoring just three goals from 12 attempts. Ended up being on the bench for much of the second half. It was a bizarre opening game, it has to be said, between Serbia and Poland. Very low scoring. Five goals in the uh, last 15 minutes only between the two teams. Kulichov uh, happy with what he's seeing so far despite the fact that his team trailed by two. Oh, and again, it's the third time they've uh, gifted the ball. And no mistake by Ivan Nikcevic, 32-year-old who plays in Poland. Storms away. Team timeout called for uh, Russia by Kulichov. Понятно, что дело на, на, на своих ошибках проиграем. Все нормально, в защите стоим, там нападение, поспокойнее. Все, 8 минут сыграли, успокоились. Владимир Максимов, сыграли, блин, вернули передачу, блин, не получилось, блин. Еще раз протащили и полез куда чуть-чуть. Пусть Егор перейдет, полез. Serega, but, uh, Kulichov, Barney, Barney. Barney. Uh, 123 Barney. times for Russia, very calm by comparison. has a great rapport with his players and uh, he's got a few experienced ones. Of course, it uh, does not help their cause one little bit that the uh, Vardar Skopje trio of Chipurin and Rasvortsev were injured and Dibirov declared himself unavailable and not here. Yeah, Russian women's team coach Tretilov was even quoted as saying that uh, Dibirov was a traitor for refusing to play for his country in modern time off. Maybe more extreme view, but if you know Tretilov, not an entirely unsurprising comment from him. So play resumes eight and a half minutes in, then Russia on the attack, but they're trailing 4-7 against Serbia, who need just a draw here to uh, book their main group ticket. Russia, from the outset, were the vulnerable team in this group, with only three going through, but they're determined to try and pull off the old surprise if they can. Sergei Gorbok, 31-year-old left back, nice height, plays for Reineka Leuven. They're very unsettled there, this talk, he may go off, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to Vardar Skopje. Two goals in it now. For the line, Toskic. Oh, I think we've got a two minute suspension. Let's have another look. The ball goes into him. Gorbok definitely inside. No, it's just a free throw. I was going to say, looking at that again, I couldn't see any reason why you would send anyone off. But this time it is a penalty. And once more, Toskic causing problems. He manages to turn this time, but uh, there's the fault. He gets absolutely bundled over the line by Skopinsev, who just uh, charged back into him. 
so Bogdanov faces Vujic through the legs nicely taken by uh, Marko Vujic Bogdanov offered him that uh, so no luck for Bogdanov He's uh, played for so long in the shadow of uh, Kostigov and Grams in the Russian team, and now he's got a chance to uh, be the number one keeper for Russia, but uh, four saves only on the opening game. 14% save rate was poor. Needs to uh, really uh, step up to date. So we're just past the 10-minute mark in the first half, and with that save by, Ninadic, by uh, Stanic, Serbia on the attack. Leading 8-5. That's better by Bogdanov. Reads it well on the rebound, but the loose ball picked up by Nikcevic. Second goal of the game for the winger. 14. Fortunately, uh, if Dokimov reacted too slow there, he should have just jumped in and tapped the ball off to the side, if anything. So 9-5, the scoreline. Two-minute suspension on the other side for uh, Serbia, Rodanovic. Score of two goals so far. Let's have another look. Pulling the arm from behind on uh, Evdokimov. Fairly clear-cut call as uh, Matic has a word with him. Kovaliev. Cool, very cool. And Stanis just moved the weight of his body onto the right side very slightly, and it was enough for Kovalev to just bounce the ball next to the other foot. Second penalty scored by the uh, Russian captain. He's their most experienced player with 125 internationals, 307 goals. They're not the top scorer in the team. And it is interesting that Russia have decided to start with Atigropoulou at the right back position. Nikcevic, big angle. But the lob a little bit too lofted, I'm afraid, and comes off the top of the crossbar. Well, we just uh, talked about Igropoulou, and he is coming on. Scored over 500 goals for Russia in 108 appearances at number 35. He's taking up. Uh, Camp in the central position for the moment rather than his more customary right back. Clever one! Quickly put it across to the wing. And immediately he has an effect. Skopinsev looks across and thanks him for the uh, quick thinking. And uh, Radivojevic, Flensburg winger, caught napping on the wing for Serbia. So despite being uh, Short-handed, struggling to really cover, and uh, Stanic has been taken off. No real surprise there, with uh, one save from eight shots only. And the uh, number 16 has gone in Milic. Ball's loose. Skopin save. No mistake. Hammers it away. Skopinsev off like a rocket, the 29-year-old uh, who plays in the Ukraine for Moto Zaporozhye. Slowly but surely, Russia uh, clawing their way back in again with three goals without reply. Free throw, they've got a yellow card as well. Urupulu picking that one up. Occupational hazard for the back player. Yes, 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 played predominantly a 6-0 uh, the other day, looking for Toskic, that went too far. Russia trying to break out on a phase two here. Serbs not getting back too quickly, the wing needed it, but they needed a better pass than that, unfortunately. That's good, oh, it bounced straight out of his hands. Evdokimov, experienced line player, and that's an attacking foul. Two players still sprawled out in the area as uh, Gorbok pulls himself back up again. And uh, Ninadic just uh, plowed into him. And Gorbok, uh, has he been dead legged, I wonder? That's uh, the last thing they need. 
They've got enough problems with their injuries already. Lechov, calm and collected. And on the last attack, it was a definite chance to level it. The winger had so much room in Igrupulo. Particularly customarily uh, missed his pass to the wing, but then the pass to the line player, Ivdokimov, that bounced straight out. So the uh, last two encounters between these two teams in the qualifiers for this tournament, resulting in Serbian wins. 29-28 in Russia and 30-29 in Serbia. So very close, one goal in it. Straight through and they're level. All credit to them, and it's come courtesy of Sergei Shelmenko, based in Belarus for Dinamo Minsky place. And the goalkeeper able to stem the tide. And so as we come up to the midway point in the first half, from 9-5 up, Serbia have now conceded four goals without reply. And this uh, remodeled uh, Russian team who are beginning a new journey with Kulichov. A very good spell of play, saved by Bogdanov. Another one who plays for Dinamo Minsk alongside his teammate Shelmenko. No luck for Vuyin. Masa Ilic and Vuyin quiet so far. Momir Ilic just one shot, failed on that one. And uh, Vuyin, one open play shot and one penalty. So Russia has brought in Zitnikov into the back uh, position of left back, number 89, one of the newcomers. That's a poor shot straight down the middle and a comfortable save for Milic. Vuyin nearly giving it away. Milic and the Russians putting them under pressure, looking for the, uh, for the offensive foul. Didn't get it, but they've stolen the ball back anyway. Zitnikov tries to go through the legs of the keeper, but a little shove on the way through, and it's a free throw for Russia played by the 24-year-old, just 13 internationals for Russia, Zhitnikov. Plays for the champions, Shekovsky, Medvedi. Tostic, one goal so far for the Varda Skopje line player. minutes without a goal now for Serbia. Conceding a 4-0 in the process. And just uh, mopping the floor up. So later today then France, who themselves are uh, suffering through uh, an amazing uh, spate of injuries but uh, nevertheless looked very impressive in the opening group c match the other day to beat russia they'll be up later on against poland nice one five goals without reply now as atman gets his second Nine kilometers an hour, the shot. It's been a very, very good spell. Well, finally, after six minutes without goal, Ilic scores. Long range shot. Well, we've got a whistle and a two minute suspension for pushing. Atman sent flying. Vuyin 
Ryan's been sent off. There's the shot, pushed him in the back. So Boyan takes his place on the bench. Bit of an inconspicuous start by him so far in the game. And another power play then for Russia. To maybe try and uh, get the lead back. Grupulo. Oh, a lot of gap. Well, the defence absolutely static. Manolovic, a defence specialist, seemed rooted to the spot as Gorbok landed. Look at this. Well, he couldn't do too much about it. If he tackled him from behind, it was going to be a penalty, but Gorbok did incredibly well to just beat him. So nice spread. For goals so far, a couple of goals apiece for Russia for Kovalev, Dokimov, Skopin, Sevatman, and Gorbok. With Shalmenko getting the other one. So they're back in front again after having been 5-9 uh, down at one point. And it's a lack of creativity. No one seems to want to take the long range shots for the Serbs at the moment, despite the fact they got Ilic and Buyin in the lineup. They brought in Zelinovic now in place of Vujin at the right back while he's serving out his two-minute suspension, a relative newcomer to the side. Zitnikov comes back again, wing to wing. No space, though, for Kovalev to do very much about it over there. Igor Pulo in the centre. Put into the wing. Oh. Into the keeper, and in fact, it's... Uh, Shushkarev, who's come on now for Kovalev, one of the uh, newcomers. Hung in the air for a long time, but in the end, uh, put it straight into the uh, arms of the keeper, Milic. That is uh, his second save from six. 20 minutes played then in the game, and it's 11-10 to Russia. Serbia, though, have served out that uh, suspension without too much damage being inflicted. One goal. Cuts back inside again. Zelinovic brought down the 23-year-old who plays in Slovenia for Selje. Takes his uh, place back again at the back. Despite being back to full strength again, they don't bring on Vujin. That's a weak shot, it's comfortably saved by Bogdanov. And the Russians on the break as uh, Serbia is slow to react. Bogdanov, cheers. Well, he started it off with the save. And Shishkarev finished it off. And the scoring spread even more now throughout the team as the 25-year-old from Tchaikovsky Medvedi scores. Team timeout called by Serbia. Nikcevic not looking entirely happy. Well, you look at the uh, scoring board and they're coming up to 10 minutes play during which Serbia have managed just one goal. And we're inside now the 21st minute. It's been a 7 1 exchange since uh, Dipnemoj they're mostly driving in, and they certainly are unsettled by the 5-1 defence. It's being played very deeply by Kulikov's team. But nevertheless, they've got the firepower that they should be able to cut in and use the space behind him. One of the goals by uh, Adman so far. Two nicely taken efforts for the Metallurg Skopje marksman. Ironically beating his teammate Stanic in the Serbian goal. So the uh, play resumes. Two goals down. Serbia, though, are back to full strength again.
penalty awarded and Fu Yin comes off the bench for that one. Well, he beats uh, Igor Levchin, goalkeeper who's just come in for Bogdanov through the legs. Second penalty success for Marko Vujin. Brings the deficit back to one. So for the moment at least Igro Kulo is back off again. Zitnikov goes wide, there's no space for the winger though. Wisely he comes out again, Atman drives in. Straight down the middle, that wasn't a great shot. Comes streaming out again. Shalmenko loitering to try and uh, take the ball away, he's done well, that uh, forced him back. Mitsevic has come off as well, Nemanja Ilic. Swifts back again. Nikcevic goes in for the attack. So back to where they were at the beginning. Nenadic in the center. Vujin at right back. Ilic at left back. Vujin. And the Russians flowing nicely in defense. Oh, awkward bounce as the uh, referees had their hand up. And Niradic gets his third goal, beating uh, Bogdanov, who's back in goal after Levchin's uh, brief penalty appearance. Save, but a free throw, Atman brought down. 26-year-old, uh, he used to play for Dinamo Minsk in Belarus, seems fine, he's back up again. One of the more experienced players in the team. Two world championships and uh, one Euro under his belt already, and that was a pretty uh, hard tackle went down heavily and the Serbs have decided to switch to uh, an equally deep 5-1 defense with Nikcevic at the front trying to unsettle those uh, running plays that the Russians have been doing so far. Zitnikov goes in the center, takes Nikcevic with him. Atman looking for support but both the back players have gone in. In the end they're running out of options but the ball's fallen kindly and is picked up again by Skopinsev. Shalmenko playing it right back instead of Igropulo. Here he comes again. Good play. And if Dokimov receives the ball and finishes the job nicely, Milic seemed to back off the ball almost. Look at the goalkeeper as the uh, line player turns. He uh, committed himself far too early, falling backwards. So Russia edge back ahead and uh, Matic looks on a little uh, dispassionately to say the least, dispossessed Nikcevic. Gorbok. Oh, off the post, unlucky for them, and the break is on the other way now, as Serbia stream back. Into the wing, big angle, through the legs of the keeper, and it's all square again. Nicely done by Prodanovic. Third goal for him. 27-year-old, he plays the Heine Kaluven. and Bullion not used in uh, defence. Five minutes remaining then in the first half, looking for the line. It's intercepted instead, and Nikcevic is up there, but he's closely marked, trying to keep the defenders at bay instead. Pronovic, it's saved! Bogdanov! Well, he's not got too close to it too often, but that was a good one. It's his fifth save now made three since coming back on again after that uh, very short break for Levchin to go on and take the penalty seems to refocus his mind a little Zitnikov Gorpok nicely done again Sergei Shelmenko Drives in behind the defender, and once more Manolovic caught slow, and he's found himself a couple of times chasing after the back players who go past him. If you've got to play a deep defence, that's the downside. You are leaving space at the back. And so in the seesaw game, Russia edge back in front. Well, 
and it's uh, a game where both teams are scoring well when they get the chances. Free throw, Vuyen brought down. 65% success rate on their shooting for the Serbs, 64 for Russia as Evdokimov gets a two-minute suspension. And there's why. The arm from behind. And, uh, that's never advised. So a power play for Serbia. By the time that uh, Russia get back to full strength, there'll only be a minute and a half left of the game. Or at least in the first half, I should say. Let's not get carried away. So Serbia need to try and capitalise now. That's nice, Nikcevic, a big space. Oh, he's missed. It's been given as a uh, ball for Russia. I wondered whether it came off one of the defenders' feet. Matic may have thought the same. Russians have to be clever about this and just try and run the clock down, make sure that when they take chances, they're good chances. Igropoulou has come on. Well, ironically, I was going to say, to give a little bit of experience and stability, and he takes a very unwise, long-range shot far too early. It's a comfortable save for Milic, and he's handed possession straight back to Serbia. But after good effort in the opening game, Igropoulou, with five goals, he's uh, struggling to find his uh, way in this one, I'm afraid. Six minutes played, no goals, and now he's given possession away. Luckily for them, that's gone wide. Don't think Bogdanov necessarily touched it. And Nikcevic, still only on uh, two goals from four. Karni Radic looking uh, a little bit uh, disconsolate on the bench. So we enter the last two minutes of the first half. They reversed the trend of the last two games in the uh, qualifying rounds when uh, Serbia won. And that's too many steps. And again, Igropoulou has given possession away. And that's going to be a two-minute suspension, is it? The referee seems to have that kind of demeanour about him. Quick chat between the two Spaniards. Raloy and Sabrosa. After Zelishnikov is uh, brought down, pushed in the back by Gorbok. Yet no, Atman's been given the suspension. Well, uh, Oscar Raloui gives him the explanation. Let's have a look again for number 11. Well, I think it's a close call. He does reach across him. And technically, you could say he's close to his neck. And they are better placed than uh, we were looking at it there. So Atman is off. Gorbok, who I thought might have been the recipient because he was behind and seemed to give him a little bit of a push. And so for just a handful of seconds, Russia will have a double suspension running. It's, uh, will the Serbs be able to take advantage of it? And uh, they are changing the left winger. No huge surprise there after Nicevic scores just uh, two from five now. And they brought in Nemanja Ilic. Bogdanov throws himself on the ball and he's pleased with that, he should be. Because uh, Russia can now try and run the clock down. They're going to be short-handed not only uh, to finish this half, but also going into the uh, second half as well. Igorupulo has uh, been pushed off into the wing. There's the goalkeeper efficiency. Bogdanov 38%. Milic and Stanic between them 26%. Free throw. So Guyin also struggling then with that last shot. He scored three from six. That's another free throw. The Russians keep possession as we enter well into the last minute before the half-time break. With exactly uh, one minute remaining on the power play for Serbia. The Russians are doing very well indeed here. 
Tadic having a quick word with Buyin. Expensive in the first game, improving so again in this one. Igropulo this time at least doesn't give the ball away. That came off a defender, took the sting out of it, and Serbia come away with the ball. Serbia, who uh, it was a bit of a surprise, even though they were playing at home, took silver two years ago on, uh, in Belgrade. After they lost to Denmark in the final of Euro 2012. Eight seconds. Late shot needed. Here he comes, Ilic. Yes! With the last shot of the first half, Mamir Ilic, the captain, levels the score. That nice uh, jump. The defender stood back, gave him far too much room, and uh, Ilic happy to uh, take the shot. So at half time, then here in Aarhus, it's Russia 14, Serbia 14. Well, the Russians generally more steady. They started slowly. They got hit a little bit, went 5-9 uh, down against Serbia, but then hit them with a 5-0 when uh, Russia failed to score for 11 minutes. Oh, Serbia, rather, failed to score for 11 minutes. Then they steadied things down. So let's have a look at the stats then. Both roughly the same, 54, 52% on success on attacks. Field throws exactly the same, succeeding with 55% of their shots. Three fast breaks for the Serbs, two for Russia. And six turnovers for the Russians. Three of those came when they won power play, so that's not so good. Top scoring so far in the game with a whole host of them. Vujin, Pradanovic and Ninadic for Serbia on three goals, as is F. Dokimov for Russia. And then the rest follow on two. This is a progression of play, and you can see at the bottom how uh, the Serbs completely dried up. In fact, there was a 7-1 exchange for 10 minutes. You can see at the bottom there, and then both teams dried up a bit at the end. Goals coming uh, fairly sparsely then. Two fast breaks, two penalties. Not much on the right-hand side for the Russians on the wing, but otherwise uh, success coming predominantly at six metres. For Serbia, well, the wings not having a great time. One goal from five shots. Nicevic really suffering there. Otherwise, three fast breaks and two penalties. That's how it looks at half time. It's 14 all here in Aarhus. We'll take a short break. Join us again in just a few moments.
Welcome back to the Energy Arena in Aarhus and the teams coming out for the second half of this uh, opening match this evening in Group C. It's all square between Russia and Serbia. The Russians starting slowly in the first half, went 4-7 behind, then 5-9, uh, and then suddenly hit uh, Serbia with a 5-0 to take a one-goal lead, and since then, it's been nip and tuck all the way through to the uh, half-time buzzer with Ilic in the picture there, scoring right on the buzzer to give uh, the Serbs at least parity at the break. Crowds have been treated to a good close game here, and uh, Kulichov will be happy that his team woke up because it looked as if they were in danger of repeating their uh, stolid performance of two days ago, but uh, they are up and running now, and uh, Matic knows though that uh, his team have to stay seriously focused now they need the point only to book their place in the next round both teams are succeeding with 58 percent of their shots so far there's Igor Pulu who's not had a good game so far only one shot he hasn't scored from that but more to the point when he came on to try and steady things they were short-handed he twice gave the ball away in succession and uh, each time Serbia scored against them so can Momirilic and his team settle down and uh, repeat the performances that brought them uh, albeit one goal wins in their two qualifying games in uh, June of last year in October of 2012 already the qualification started for this tournament seven groups of four teams we're looking for 15 places, normally it would be 14. The host and the defending champion would uh, have a bye. But since it was Denmark on both counts, Russia came through as the best third place team with six points in Group 7, but they finished behind Serbia and Austria. Bosnia, the bottom place team in their group. There's Nikcevic, who equally has had a, a dull first half by his standards. Two goals and five attempts. None from the wing. He's had a breakthrough near the centre and a fast break. And uh, Fu Yin, who's also uh, struggling a little. Three goals and six attempts. He got three from 12 on the opening day against Poland. Shelmenko looking focused, the 30 year old who plays for Dinamo Minsk. Formerly with Tchaikovsky Medvedi. Hit out Nenadic. He's uh, in the squad here today with his brother, Drasko Nenadic, who's a left back, 23 year old newcomer to the team. Hasn't come on yet, the Flensburg back player. So we're just about ready to get the second half underway. Well, if Russia lose here today, it's still not terminal. They could still uh, qualify if they can uh, beat uh, Poland on Friday. But uh, I'm sure they'd rather try and uh, do the job here today and take a couple of points if they can. It would be a surprise. Here we go then, Serbia throw off the second half of this Group C match, all square, 14 all, Russia-Serbia. Change of line player for Serbia, and uh, Toskic has come out, and Stojkovic has come in, number 18, 32-year-old. He's been on loan to Al Rayan in Qatar this year from Red Star Belgrade, where he's been very unsettled. And uh, Bogdanov makes a save from a very quickly taken shot by the Serbs. in the center, Shelmenko at right back, Gorbok at left back. Oh, he did so well under so much pressure, Shelmenko gets his third goal, being pushed wide. 
shot over the uh, shoulder of the defender. No change in the defence style for the Russians, who are still defending very, very deep. Skopinsev has now taken over at the front. Solid defending by Shelmenko, it brings a free throw as Petar Nenadic is uh, fouled. Nenadic, the number 31, who's scored 40 goals in the Champions League this season for Polish side Wisła Płock. Another mistake, but that's taken from the wrong place. They'll have to send the ball all the way back. Kulichov, I have to say, when you've seen some of the, the Russian coaches of the past, the passion, they're really excited, they shout at the players on the team timeouts. Really direct, if I can say that. And now Kulichov, who's very mild-mannered, quietly spoken. He's been there, he's done that, he's been a European and a world champion. And uh, the players listen intently, that was very high. Looking for the line, there's no way through there. Oh, he's managed it. Oh, the goalkeeper lets it through his legs. If duck him off, bit of a gift there. And Sojkovic and Ilic between them, he couldn't stop the shot, but Milic sort of prevented that going in. Blocked by the defence. Russians again having a good spell here. Oh, no one came up. I'm afraid Milic looking a little lost in goal. Is it time for Stanic? He's had a break, maybe to come back on again. Gorbok with his third, steamed in, no one went up to him. 105 kilometers an hour. Even Kulishov's showing emotion. And a team timeout called by Serbia. Stojkovic, the only player who on the Serbian side are technically playing in Serbia. All the others play in a myriad of other European countries. He has been on loan from his club, where he's been unsettled. Red Star Belgrade went to Al Rayyan in Qatar, but this talk is going to Meshkov Brest now in Belarus in, uh, when these championships are over. And if you want more information about this, you want to read some of the background stories to what's going on, you can always go on to the uh, ehf-euro.com website. Join the Twitter feed on hashtag EHF Euro 2014. Goalkeeper efficiency for Serbia 23% only. It's still not staggeringly high for the Russians with Bogdanov on 36%. But uh, surely uh, Stanic has got to come back in. Milic just getting all his positioning wrong. So play resumes. Got to press on now, uh, Serbia, and just uh, try and settle. Momir Rinic has come into the uh, central position, the 26-year-old who plays for Göppingen in Germany. Ilic, good defence again. They keep on blocking the crossover, saved by Bogdanov. It's gone out to the side for a throw-in. And still, uh, Vujin just can't get his range. Three from seven only now for the uh, Serbian marksman. Oh, that was clever. Rinic, Ilic stopped again, and the Russian defence working overtime. Rinic, a little bit of space, looking for the uh, attacking foul, and that's saved by Bogdanov. Kulikshov looks on anxiously. Was that going to be a two-minute suspension? It isn't. Ten saves then for Bogdanov, who's moving up nicely, 43%. Got his stats straight back up into the uh, top level range. And Shitnikov organizes the Russian attack. Shelmenko on the right hand side. Gorbok comes across. Looked for the cross, it wasn't happening. And Stanic, who has replaced Milic in goal, a wise decision, I think. Saves a comfortable shot despite the deflection. Rinic. Ilic. And again, Vujin and, and uh, Ilic are not getting that connection. They played together at uh, Kiel. For a while, but uh, Momir Ilic has now gone off to uh, play for Vesprem in Hungary. But there's not that connection between them. They've both ran for the same uh, spot just now, and Vujin is blocked, and that's too high. It's another two minute suspension. And it's Evdokimov, who's already been sent off once for exactly the same thing. The 31 year old looks disconsolate. 
missed in defense, or two meters and 114 kilos of him, but I don't think that's high. Let's have a look again. Was it before? He didn't catch him, I don't think. He glanced down, but then again, he didn't argue much. It makes you think maybe he knows he did. Pushkin comes in to uh, plug the gap in defense, the number five. And with the power play, they've uh, managed to lose possession, Serbia. Gorbok looks uh, for a quick pass up, but uh, they settled things down. Igropoulos come on. They need him to be a bit more level-headed this time, the number 35. Well, in fact, he's going to take no chances. Kulechovi takes him off. Shalmenko goes back in again. They're short-handed. They've got to be sensible now. Kovaliev, the captain, starts to run in. He goes in on the line to try and flatten the defence. Atman is there too. Oh, he's got a bit of a gap. Gets a push, and that's a free throw. And that's fine. That lets the clock run down. That's good play by the 26-year-old. Playing his second European Championship. He was there two years ago. These teams didn't meet, though, in Serbia. Shalmenko got a bit of space. Oh, decides to take the shot. That's a good save by Stanic. Break seems to have done him good. Making his uh, second save only. So if he can continue the run. So still 35 seconds to go on the power play for Serbia. They've got a flat defence now by necessity from Russia, where they need to take advantage. They've got such big guns with Ilic and Vujin. And Atman happy to give away the free throw and run that clock down still further. And there seems to be a shyness around the long-range shooting uh, for Serbia. Despite a formidable trio at the back, into the wing. That's a big angle. Oh, save! Brilliant play by Bogdanov. He's happy to take his time. It was a good angle for the wing shot, and the inside post was begging. Bogdanov now, his 11th save of the game, and Russia are back to full strength again. If Dokimov comes in and slots back in on the line. Dokimov, who played for Ciudad Real in Spain for a while, but he scores straight away after coming on. His fifth. Well, just as in the first half when they suffered a 5 0 reverse, the Russians have failed to score now for the opening uh, seven minutes and more of the second half. Was that a double dribble? While uh, the Russians have put four past them making life very difficult for themselves. They have to come back again. Free throw, Skopinsev doing his job at the front. Industrious uh, winger. And saved by Bogdanov, goes to the side though, throw in. And he's happy because his defence are forcing them to take very speculative long-range shots. And with no one really up for some uh, decent long-range shooting. Bogdanov is fine with that. Ilic, this time he tries it. It's a poor shot, straight down the middle. It's going to be a free throw, unnecessarily given away by uh, Gorbok. I don't think he realised he had as much space as he did when he scooped the ball back. He could have just left that go to his teammate. And a rather disconsolate-looking Manolovic, the defence specialist, not uh, on, of course, at the moment. But looking anxious as uh, we see Stojkovic there. Played for a long time with Vivek Kielce in Poland. Very, very good line player. But, uh, struggling to find space in this uh, good, solid Russian defence with uh, Igropoulou being used in that defensive role only at the moment. And uh, this deep defence has worked very well to break down these uh, crossover plays of the Serbian team and neutralize the uh, Vujin Ilic effect into the wing. That's more like it. Nemanja Ilic. No relation to Mumir. And that's their first goal. It's taken uh, eight minutes and 30 seconds. Well, 
Serbia, though, still lead by three. Uh, Serbia, Russia, I do beg your pardon. Oof. That was a tap on the hand. Toskic uh, sportingly puts his hand straight up to say, that's right, that's me. Just uh, caught the arm on the follow-through. Referees want it taken from the right place, which if Dokimov does and slots back in again. Well, they're pushing up a long way now onto Gorbok. Free throw again. As Shishkarev complains, uh, Zhitnikov rather complains about uh, being held. And Matic needs more from his team though. Shalmenko. He's going to get a free throw. Passive plays being worn now, and uh, Russia need to get in a good shot. Gorbok and Shalmenko preparing. Three meters away, the defenders have to be. Well, that was not a good shot, and uh, no problem at all for uh, Stanic. Oh, that's more like it. Voyin. His fourth goal, although two from open play only, as we hit the ten-minute mark and a team timeout. Normally you'd say, well, Russia Serbia should be a balanced game. I think with the squad that Russia have brought, minus Chiforin, Rasvodsev, and Dibirov, and with a lot of other retirements, would still be a bit of a surprise. But Russia is so different to the Maximov era, where everything was very regimented. They had very strict tactics. You follow the play. With Kulichov, it's more open, it's more fun. He allows them a lot more latitude in their play. Bogdanov, who's made a string of good saves and who's coming into his own in this game. 13 saves, a 46% success rate. In particular, early in the second half, has been on the blinding so here we go then. We've just under 20 minutes remaining in this game. Russia leading by two against the Spanish Serbs. Oh, he nearly tried to get through. Good defending by Toskic. Space on the wing, though. That's beautifully taken. Kopinsev gets his third, straight over the head of Stanic. <laughs> well, Kulichov may be as uh, cool as a cucumber on the side, but he shows he has got an emotional side to him too. Celebrates the goal there, three goals up now, Russia. Skopinsev looking like a Trojan in the front of this 5-1 defence for the Russians. That's good play, oh, but he ran straight in, Nenadic. Had so many choices and instead ran into the door. Zitnikov sent flying and 24 uh, year old going up. Just 13 internationals to his name, Zitnikov, the number 89. Showing great maturity. So Igropulo stays on now on the attack. Top scorer in the team with over 500 goals for Russia. That wing shot, though, goes begging, unfortunately, as if Dokimov again tries to uh, overlap the defence. So Drasko Nidadic has come on, number 30. Oh, off the post, stays out. Two Nidadic brothers playing alongside each other now. Oh, stolen, beautifully stolen as well. Serbia streaming back. And it's Drasko Nenadic, the 23-year-old Flensburg back player, who scores his first goal of the game. Oh, that was a mistake on the attack by the Russians, trying to bounce the ball close up to the defenders. Keep it moving, that's the rule. Igropulo, well, that's more like him. He's got a mighty shot. 
but uh, hasn't been able to brought, bring it to bear in the first half, but now he does. Trokulu has scored five on their opening game. That's his first of the game here today. So in the centre then, the younger brother, Drasko, 23, and his brother, Peta, 31, who's uh, four years older. He goes through. Well, Shane, he can do as well as his brother. But he's taken a blow in the process. They've just got caught on a follow through from the uh, defence. So Serbia back to within two. Let's have a look again. It's coming up now, I think. Well, no, it was the earlier knock. It didn't seem a hard knock, but obviously uh, caught him awkwardly. That each uh, goes off. Well, the problem is also for Serbia that their defence specialist Manolovic hasn't. Uh, that's going to be a Russian free throw, defending inside the area. Caught inside. And so, as I was saying, Manolovic, the defence specialist, having a miserable day for Serbia as well. That's an attacking foul, rather clumsily done by Alexander Pushkin, the uh, never St. Petersburg line player. That's an attacking foul the other way. Vujin. Igropulo to the wing, there's no space then, wisely this time they don't take the shot, they decide to move it around, that's the right call by Dmitry Kovalev, the captain, most experienced player Kovalev in the Russian side, two world championships, played at the Olympic Games in 2008 as well, and Euro 2010, but he missed it two years ago through injury, Igorokulo, they're getting in very close now, Oh, he saw the spot, Gorbok just saw enough daylight between the hands of the defender. Brilliant play though on the line by Evdokimov who held up two defenders, 100 kilometers an hour. Three goal lead restored for Russia. Well, Kudinov warming up on the bench and I wonder if they need to change the front defender, Skopinsev, who's worked so hard at the front of this deep defence. Oh, they, uh, Stojkovic desperately trying to get to the line to get the penalty. And uh, we've got an injury with Gorbok caught underneath a pile of three players that went down. And the uh, doctor's on very quickly. Let's have another look again. Uh, Gorbok defending inside the area, but did he do enough to stop the penalty? So is he going to be sent off anyway when he comes up? Oh, there he goes. He's just twitched it. So it's not actually being landed on. I wonder if uh, he's uh, pulled a muscle. See, he reached over on the weight, and that is not good news. He looks as if he's actually uh, got a brace on anyway. Let's have a quick look and see. That is uh, desperate for... Uh, Gorbok, who's looking in a really, really bad way. And, uh, Stojkovic, he's got a two-minute suspension, but frankly, I think that's uh, the least of his problems just now. And that could be a big loss for Kulechov. So it may mean Atman going back to the centre with Zhitnikov shifting to the left-hand side, and it looked as if he pulled his back. that tussle. Oh, oh, oh. Exactly uh, midway through the uh, second half and uh, oh, brilliant save. The ball still with the... Uh, well, it was still with Serbia, but in fact it came off the foot of uh, Nemanja Ilic. Let's see if he's... Right, there's the save. Comes down and it just clipped his foot as he rolled in the area and bounced past him, quite accidental, but it did touch the foot. Bit of a let-off for the Russians. We 
despite being short-handed, will keep the line player if Dukimov on. He starts on the left wing, but wait for him to run in behind the defence. While well, Gorbok, I'm afraid, is looking in agony on the bench. Igropulo, little hand off, Zitnikov. Atman shifted off on the other side now. Igropulo tries to get free. It's a free throw that lets the clock run down. Tries the shot, that's well saved by Stanic. So Serbia come back, 50 minutes, or 50 seconds rather, remaining on their power play. Stojkovic goes in on the line. Ah, oh, brilliant shot. Petar Ninadic, goal number five. 27-year-old from Viswa Płock. Nice low shot, 107 kilometers an hour. And, uh, oh, surely not another injury for the uh, Russians. An ankle problem now for Evdokimov, the most experienced uh, line player. 84 internationals for his country is the last thing you want, but that did look like an, an awkward turn. He uh, gets up. So Christian Edom in defence, and he's off as well. Well, two injuries in quick succession for Russia. They've got a bad enough injury list already without losing two of their starting lineup. So if Dokimov is off, will it be Pushkin or Polyakov? Probably Pushkin, I could imagine, coming on. And the two uh, injured players side by side on the Russian bench. Anxious moments for the Russian team. Two goal lead, but uh, bit by bit it seems the Russians are dropping. Shelmenko now at the right back and uh, Igropolo now playing on the right wing. That's an interesting combination while they're short handed. Goes in on the line. In that respect, he has got the demeanor of a line player. Igropolo, strong enough into the wing, but that's a loose ball, and uh, Serbia get it back. Well, if Dokimov, looking as if he's in pain, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. Attacking foul, he lost control of the ball, and uh, as he focused on retrieving it, he ran straight into the defender. 13 minutes remaining then in the game. Go straight into uh, Skopinsev. So Russia back to full strength again. And if, uh, they have gone with Alexander Pushkin, 26 year old newcomer to the team. Just four internationals for Russia, the number five. Oh, much too high. Bad mistake by Atman. And they're doing their best to try and strap him up and. Uh, get if Dokimov back on again mind you let's not take anything away from Pushkin he got three from three in their opening game the newcomer Zanicevic back in the frame for Serbia on the left wing long-range shot it was an awkward bounce left well by Bogdanov but the uh, shove on uh, Drasko Nenadic the Flensburg back player gives him the opportunity to get a free throw. Matic looks on. Well, the injuries are certainly, or should be helping his team to try and settle in, but uh, someone's got a lead. It does become difficult. Digging in the Russians. That's a beautiful pass. It's a penalty defending inside the area by Atman. And Stojkovic does well. Nice pass into him by uh, Ninadic. So Vujin to step up and face Bogdanov, his third penalty of the game. Two from two so far. A bit of a discussion going on with the uh, Serbian team. Henrik Lacour, the uh, European Handball Federation observer, having spotted an infringement. I wonder if they've had a faulty substitution. They have. 
And Henrik Lacour bringing it to the notice of the referees. Trying to see who it was, but clearly someone went on a little bit too soon. And uh, Toskic is the player who's received the two-minute suspension. And that will help maybe take some of the pressure off Russia. Meanwhile, Vuyin steps up to the seven-meter line. Oh, touched it, Bogdanov. But it wasn't enough. Fifth goal of the game for Vuyin. Top straight down the middle. Five from ten shots. So now, on the other hand, it's a power play for Russia. Still Pushkin on the line. That's good play. Big on the wing. So much space there. And Skopinsev gets his fourth. Good at that, Igropulo. He looks very wide, and it's the second time in the game he's done it. Puyin gave him a little shove on the hip to try and put him off balance, but uh, Skopinsev, cool as anything, slots it away. Two goal lead. looking for it there's a whole melee of players having to stop play now just to get people back up again well, uh, injuries succeeding each other the game is uh, being played with very very tough defending but uh, there is the push, and then he trips. He just caught him, and I think he's landed awkwardly on his back, Nedadic. Yeah, base of the spine. There, and uh, may have not been helped by the fact that he landed on the foot as well. Luckily, though, for Serbia, Petar Nedadic seems okay. Ladies and gentlemen, about 10 minutes to play in this Goals in it. Ilic not in the attack. They've really had to turn the bench here with uh, Ilic and Vujin again not having uh, perfect days by any means. Vujin tries the shot, gets nothing for it. It's saved. Sums up his day really. Five goals from 11 attempts, three of them penalties. So technically, two from eight in open play. That's no good. So we're into the last 10 minutes. No space on the wing, still the power play for Russia. Igropulo. Oh, brilliant. What a shot he's got. Atman. Launches a missile from a long way out. Only that he went down very quickly and left uh, punching the air on that occasion. Russia 23, Serbia 20. Two quick goals now by Russia. It came off a defender, a throw in from the corner. Kulichov trying to stay calm and saw his heart beating at 110 miles an hour. Nenadic. Nikcevic. Oh, but that I've got his hand to it but couldn't keep it out. Good power by Nikcevic, a 32 year old. Plays for Wisła Płock in Poland. Still a two-goal lead for Russia. Vitali Nadic and Sojkovic not being used in uh, defence. Trying for Matic to give some further instructions to them. Vilic coming back in for the job in defence. This is Toskic. Shelmenko came a little bit too early for that. Well saved by Stanic. Nikcevic. And Atman gets in his way and uh, just gives away a free throw. Good play by Atman, but uh, 
behind Stanic launching the break and uh, Nikcevic so quick off the mark. Good look at the clock by uh, Atman. Still a lot of time to go. This uh, could tip either way. Still stopping Seb working at the front of this deep 5 1 defense. Oh, brilliant play, but uh, we've had a, another injury. Got caught by the follow through, slapped in the face. Scoffing Seb catching him. Let's have another look again. Selimovic, yeah, it's a follow through. There it is, and uh, Skopin Sev gets him. Well, Zelenovic seems none the worse for it. Atman, well, he's being told he's got a two minute suspension. That's his second. So he'll need to watch himself. Let's have a look. I don't think he was anywhere near the face. He caught his shoulder, grabbed his shoulder and gave him a little bit of a shove. And Russia penalised. That could be a chance now for Serbia to get back into the game. It was a bit of a harsh call by uh, Sabroso, the Spanish referee, but there you go. You've got to live with it. That's the way it is. They don't have the benefit of replay. Nikov in the center, Shalmenko at right back. Oh, and that's not looking too good. They've Dokimov who's got his left ankle heavily strapped and he's gone again. He's hobbling off, and that's a sad sight. That could be the end of his game. Let's hope not his championship. That was uh, shot of it uh, being strapped earlier. Teammates are keeping up the momentum. Shelmenko, fourth goal for him. Long range shot, awkward bounce, and Stanic put the weight of his uh, body on the left hand side and uh, caught flat footed as a result. So flat defense for Russia by necessity with that suspension. Oh, too many steps. He's been let off, Zelenovic. Stojkovic comes out, drops back in again. Nidadic goes for the wing. And uh, Kovalev steps inside the area to stop the pass reaching uh, Nikcevic. Nidadic has gone all the way through. Zelenovic drives in behind the front. The defender came out a bit, and as soon as he did, and that's incidentally. Uh, Good news for the Russians. I meant to say on the last attack that uh, Gorobok has come back on again. I heard his back, number 13, but he's there. He's on the far side. One goal in it. Russia's just about to get back to full strength. So in comes Skopinsev, the winger, and they can settle down again. Pushkin is on the line. To break through, no way in there, unfortunately, for Skopin Sev. He'll have to come back again. 29 year old winning at a place for Zaporozhye in the Ukraine. Oh, looking for the line, but uh, he was being held, Gorbok. He's got a free throw. Not looking to have too many ill effects at all from his uh, earlier fall. So shooting not uh, up to scratch, and uh, two minute suspension for Doskic again. Uh, Gorbok has gone down. Well, has this now uh, tweaked the same one because he's landed flat on his back? Well, it's uh, Zelinovic who gets it. The three year old Slovenian base player and Gorbok still down. Let's have a quick look. He goes in to shoot. Oh, well, there's the pull. Pulled him from the back as he was jumping. Brought him down like a pancake. Well, is he going to be all right, Gorbok? He looked in absolute agony and he's holding exactly the same spot in his lower left back and shaking his head. Oh, that's such a shame. 
Well, both players patched up, put back on again, have lasted barely minutes before they have to be substituted. And uh, Russia, well, all credit to them because all the youngsters are coming out to fill the gaps and uh, the newcomers, and they're still holding their own here. Just one in front as we are now into the last five minutes of the game. Atman is back on the left wing. That's too close, surely. Oh! Well, Milic has come back on again and is immediately struggling as he was before he was substituted back out. From that angle, he should have just stood his ground and covered it. One meter 98 keeper opens uh, the door and lets the ball straight through his legs. Two goal lead for Russia. Just over four minutes remaining. Well, this could be a real coup for Kulichov if he could beat the silver medalists from the last European Championships. That came off a defender. It'll be a throw in from the uh, corner. Pushkin is coming on the line just four internationals and one goal to his name before the uh, Euro 2014. Having to plug the uh, gap left by Dokimov as he's gone off with his ankle injury. Matic still trying to look calm about things, but they... Uh, they are staring at the moment at defeat with another good save that went out behind and Bogdanov again. shot through the wall it was a nice shot but it brings up the uh, 14th save for Bogdanov a 39% save rate in fact make that 15 puts him up at 41% on the save rate so Serbia back to full strength in 25 seconds they need that into the line cleverly uh, done by Pushkin there he could have been tempted to try and take it and again cuts it but no space this time oh Good play, and uh, finally Milic gets his hand to the ball. His fifth save from 15 shots. Three minutes remaining. Still Russia lead by two. Serbia can run the clock down now, get back to full strength. Stojkovic goes back in on the line. And a team timeout called by Serbia. Well, absolute drama here in Aarhus in Group C. Serbia. Seen as a uh, contender here at these European Championships, are struggling against a Russian team who are missing key players and travelled with a lot of uh, untested players. It's worth saying that uh, Russia in the final warm-up tournament in uh, Germany lost all three matches against uh, Iceland, Austria and Germany. Before that, they played in the Yellow Cup in Switzerland just after Christmas. Draw against Egypt, narrow win against Switzerland, and got beaten by Belarus. So they came here really with uh, modest expectations to get experience. And uh, instead find themselves uh, leading one of the favourites, Gorbov there, who's uh, gone off with a back injury, but not before contributing four goals and uh, defending valiantly, but uh, a back injury tried to come back on again, it wasn't enough. So, two and a half minutes for Serbia to salvage something there, penalty defending inside the area. Stojkovic wins it again. Player who's heading to Meshkov Brest after the championships in Belarus. Igor Opulo standing well on the line there. Change of keeper. Bogdanov goes on and Igor Levchin of Pernski Medvedi comes in. And the 39-year-old keeper stop Vuyin. He can't. Vuyin makes it his sixth goal. Four of them from the seven meter line. 104 kilometers an hour for the Kiel marksman. Top scorer in the German Bundesliga, Vuyin, with 152 goals so far. And today the Russians have given him a bad time. He scored six from 13. Two minutes to go. Russia lead by one. Free throw, Shelmenko foul. 
He'll come back again. Ilic being used in defence exclusively. Doing his best uh, to lead by example as the captain. Can Russia hold on or will the uh, Serbs extra experience give them the break? Russia, who averaged just 36 and a half caps per player, lowest of any team here. Shelmenko's kept it running. Atman, ah, oh, brilliant! Windmill faint over the top, broke through, fourth goal for him. Two goal lead, one and a half minutes to go. Ilic stays on for the attack now. Nenadic tries to go around, good defending. And we've got a problem on the bench, Henrik Lacour. And is it another 40 substitution? Well, drama here. <laughs> You can see Kovalev going, yes, they've, they've done it again. They've gifted us a power play. Matic must be livid. I mean, how difficult is it? Wait till the player coming off is off before you step on twice. Who is it? It's Petar Nedadic, one of their most experienced players who's charged on too early. Toskic did it earlier, and just when they needed a cool head, they've given it away. It's a power play for Russia. They'll finish now with one extra player, the Russians, and they get the free throw. Big mistake. Stojkovic and Vujin look absolutely stunned on the bench. Long attack needed now. Well, despite those big injuries to Evdokimov and Gorbok that took them out in the second half, Russia about to pull off what could be a big surprise. The wing was begging on the far side. Igropolo would have done that. Oh, he's done it! Surely that's it! Into the last minute, Kulichov trying to look calm about it, but it's the captain, Kovalev, who scored over the head of the keeper. Milic tried to cover the inside post. It wasn't going there, and that's it. Russia take the points. There will be no time now for Serbia. Vujin, Ilic or not. Nicevic gets one back. They're looking more at the goal difference than anything else now, the Serbs. That was a nice play, though, switching it back in. 15 seconds to go before the celebrations can start for the Russian team. And a deserved win here today. A 5-0 exchange in the first half. Team timeout for Kulichov. They did it again at the beginning of the second half. A 4-0 exchange, eight and a half minutes before Serbia could get scoring. They went 18-14 up, and despite Gorbok and then Evdokimov going off in quick succession with injuries, they've hung on. There's a huge smile on Evdokimov's face. Ten turnovers apiece in a game that's been hard on defence. But where the Russians are scoring with a 61% success rate, while Serbia have dropped down to 52. I'm trying to look calm about it, and uh, Matic, well, he knows what's happened now. There's nothing more, there's no point getting overexcited about it. Stay calm, give the instructions, work on reducing the goal difference, if that's what it comes to on the uh, final day. And it's going to leave this group wide open as to who goes through. Serbia just needed the draw here today to book their place in the main round. Everyone thought they'd get at least that and more than likely win it. But instead, this experimental Russian team playing some very entertaining handball have won it. There goes the buzzer, 27-25 to Russia. And Momir Ilic and Boyin and their teammates beaten by a team who defended ferociously. Brilliant play and 15 saves by Bogdanov. 61% success rate on their shooting. And after the disappointment of their opening uh, defeat to France when they were overwhelmed by the French, they've stuck in here. Workmanlike performances, the way I described that. And Gorbok still holding the ice on his lower back. And hopefully, he and if Dokimov will be okay for their final match in two days' time against Poland. Kulechov still looking cool, but he must be absolutely delighted. 
course, both teams could still go through. It's wide open. Serbia, they'll hope that uh, Poland win and Russia don't go through, and therefore this defeat is inconsequential in the main round. But uh, who knows now the way they played. So the man of the match award's about to be given out. Well, Matic must be so disappointed, but twice his team's had bad spells and they paid the price. 5-0 in the first half, a 4 in exchange in the second half. Well, Bogdanov with his 15 saves gets the man of the match award. And look at the smile on his face. The 27-year-old who plays in Belarus for Dinamo Mits gets his award from the EHF, Selga Magnus Dotir. Brilliant string of saves in the second half. He was on fire. Serbians not looking uh, entirely excited about the whole proceedings. Mumir Ilic gets it. Two goals, but uh, more than anything else, it was his defensive work that gets him the award. But uh, I don't think he looks uh, more disinterested in the award if he could try. So there it is then. Surprise of the day. Well, one of the surprises of the tournament as Russia beat Serbia 27-25 after suffering two defeats in the qualifiers. And uh, the work by Kulichov is paying dividends here. Bit by bit, Russia coming back into the frame again. Discussion there with his uh, assistant, Alexander Rimanov, another legend of Russian handball. Well, you'll have trouble wiping the smiles off their faces as they go around to thank their supporters. But it was entirely deserved. Let's have a look then at the statistics of the game, and it'll tell you the shooting of the... Uh, well, we're going to go straight to the table. So there's confirmation then. France, Russia and Serbia all on two points. Poland still on zero, but they have their match coming up against the French now. So this table could all change in about an hour and a half's time. Hope you've enjoyed the game. Thanks for watching. But for now, from me, Paul Braz, we leave you here with the statistics from the game. As I said earlier, shows that the uh, Russian shooting was considerably more effective at 60% compared to 48 for Serbia. 10 turnovers apiece, but the attacks marginally more successful on the Russian side. Confirmation of the top scorers, Vujin with six. Well, if Dukimov for the Russians got five before being injured and uh, being taken out of the game. And this, that long spell at the beginning, you can see where the Russians didn't score and they had another little purple patch in the middle. Meanwhile, the Russians just steadily pushed away and moved the score along. And even though it was close at the end, they hung on very well indeed. So for Russia, a nice spread by the end of the game with two penalties and two fast breaks to add. Shots coming in from uh, all over the uh, court. While for Serbia, the back players, just four going in from 13 attempts. Not particularly high, I'm afraid. And only one wing shot on the right-hand side. Three fast breaks, four penalties. So that's it now. From me, Paul Bray, thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.